Theater workouts are said to enhance muscle growth by prolonging muscle protein synthesis in between actual workouts in order to hyper pump and shuttle nutrients to the muscles being fed. Could this be a long forgotten secret? Would this work for a natural athlete? Could I get my arms to actually add mass in only one week doing these? Holy moly. Well, that's exactly what I decided to find out. Doing feeder workouts every day for an entire week. But you gotta focus. Because feeder workouts are supposed to be in addition to your normal workout sessions, I kept my normal training regimen the same. So day one in the afternoon, we started with our normal training and upper body calisthenic session. It wasn't until later that night, before bed, I would implement my first set of feeder workouts. All right, good evening, guys. It is 9.46. Instead of helping my wife with the dishes, I'm gonna be doing some feeder workouts. I'll forgive you if it works and you get bigger. All right. So we're gonna do 100 flies, then we'll do 100 bicep curls, and then 100 skull crushers, I guess, I'm gonna lay down on the ground. I think I'm gonna start with these fives on each side. We're just gonna try it. We're gonna send it, we're gonna see what happens. So let's do it. So the long forgotten feeder workout, once made very popular, at least to me, by the one and only Rich Piana, rest in peace, consists of doing up to three supersets of 50 to 100 reps on the targeted muscle groups. Ideally, you'd want to pick two opposing muscle groups like biceps and triceps, but for this experiment, I decided to do shoulders, biceps, and triceps. Now you want to use a weight light enough to where you can do 50 to 100 reps for multiple sets, and also light enough to not severely tax the central nervous system, but rather provide the muscle being targeted with a hyper pump. So that's exactly what we did on day one, getting three sets of 50 reps of shoulder flies supersetted with bicep curls, supersetted with skull crushers. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the burn and pump was unreal. Now, according to Rich's protocol, you don't eat anything after you just go to bed. So that's exactly what I decided to do. And let me tell you, going to bed with a pump was a little strange. And waking up the next morning, I kind of felt a slight fatigue in the muscles, as probably could be expected after doing hundreds of reps less than 12 hours prior. On days two and three, doing the exact same protocol right before bed, 50 reps of each muscle group, three total supersets, using only these five pound plates, and then dropping to the 2.5s if necessary on the last set, getting super pumped. Holy moly. I'm so pumped. However, on day four, all of this volume started to catch up with me. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So my shoulders, biceps, and tries have been just completely wiped and exhausted today. I feel like it's gotten worse and worse every single day. I'm trying to see if we can get results based on the feeders. And I think if I did feeders every single day for a week straight, it would be diminishing returns. And I think to maximize the results here, the best thing to do is just take a day off right in this midweek, at least for me right now, based on how I feel like it is it's, it's fatigued, you know? And I think that rest day really paid off for the next day. My workout felt great. On top of having full energy, I felt like even with basic movements, I was making a better mind-muscle connection with specifically my delts and triceps more than I ever have. And I think that was due to the feeder workouts prior to this training session. Squeeze. Squeeze. So when it came to the feeder workouts this day, we decided to switch it up. Went to the gym, worked out at around 11 a.m. today. So it's been approximately five hours since we finished the workout. In between that, running some errands, just got back and just ran two miles. That's why I'm sweaty. And I wanna see if I throw feeders in maybe a little bit earlier. I don't know if maybe that'll make a difference or maybe I'll be able to rep out like more. It's feeder time, folks. So seeing if doing feeders before dinner would make a difference rather than doing feeders right before bed. Now, I believe just because we had a rest day prior and before that we were getting used to doing all the volume from the feeder workouts finally on this day we were able to do 100 reps for each and every set for a total of 900 reps so I did notice while I was still pumped, I was not as pumped as doing the feeders right before bed. And I believe this is due to when I was doing them after dinner, me having more food, sodium, carbs in my system that would allow me to get a massive pump. And because we're really trying to focus on that pump, I decided to continue doing the feeders for the remaining days after dinner, right before bed, just as Rich recommended. Man, that shoulder pump is crazy. So how have feeder workouts affected normal weight training 
towards the last day. So most of these days so far, it's more of just like a fatigue when I'm beginning my workouts. It's like I can kind of feel that, oh man, I really pumped these muscles up last night, specifically in the shoulders. Now with that being said, after I do get warmed up, that soreness or fatigue just kind of goes away and I haven't noticed any decreases or increases in the amount of weight I'm able to lift. However, I am noticing more of a like mind muscle connection when I'm lifting, specifically in those muscle groups we've been feeding. So for today, for instance, we're doing an incline press. I'm like really feeling it in my shoulders. Like they feel really solid, stable. And every time I press, I can feel my delts really working. And then at the top, I can feel my triceps contracting as well. Like before it, it was more just like you know, power through it and push it and whatnot. When it comes to overall workout energy after the warm up, really no difference. I'm, you know, I'm feeling good. Now with that being said, the soreness did seem to accumulate after doing these multiple days in a row. And you must remember I did take a rest day in the middle of this experiment. But with that being said, I wanted to push it for the final spurt. So on day six and seven, I did 900 reps of the feeder workout right before bed. And dang, as you can imagine, this was exhausting and the pump was unreal. I could barely move my arms at the end of both of these days. But with that being said, would the pump stick around for permanent results? Well, we would just have to wait and see. Let's find out 48 hours from now when we take final measurements. So feeder workouts, did they work out? Yes, they did. So taking a look at the before and after photos, side by side, resting, front view, it's kinda hard to tell, I know. While my arms are still small from the front view relative to the rest of my body, if you look very closely, you can see in the after photos, my arms are actually slightly bigger. Now actually doing a flexed front bicep measurement, after the feeder workouts, my arms are coming in at almost 15 and a half inches, when before they were slightly under 15 and a quarter. Keep in mind, nothing else to my training throughout the week was significantly different, so we put on approximately a quarter inch to each arm in only one week doing these feeder workouts. Now when I did take measurements around my shoulders, I was getting approximately the same circumference, which is kind of strange to me because literally after every feeder session, my shoulders felt so pumped. I was thinking we were going to put on some significant size to the shoulders, but I guess measurably, there wasn't really much difference. Now, however, for me, usually in the past, I've noticed what really helps my shoulders look more developed is when I do more heavy movements like handstand pushups or shoulder presses, etc. So based on my experience, do I think feeders work? When's the best time to do them? Will I continue doing them? Well, based on what I have just went through, I think they absolutely do work. However, I don't know if it's necessary to do them every single day of the week. The way I would actually do these feeders if I was gonna continue to do them is I would probably only do them up to like twice a week. I would probably focus my feeder workouts on areas that I thought were weaker for me or areas that I was really trying to grow. Now, that being said, am I going to continue doing feeder workouts? So if I do decide to start focusing on more bodybuilding exercises and body bodybuilding type stuff, then absolutely as a natural athlete, I would recommend myself to keep doing feeder workouts maybe twice a week like I just mentioned. But as of right now, I am actually wanting to focus on some other aspects of fitness. And right now, it's just not prioritizing doing feeders, bodybuilding, etc., into my training sessions. In fact, we're gonna be working on some things that we have coming out in these next challenges coming up and it's gonna be quite interesting. With that being said, yes, we got results this challenge. Yes, I had a great time doing this. Very interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are interested in my body weight training program, get strong with your body weight virtually anywhere. Check out Bodyweight Beast 2.0 on OnlyKindsFitness.com. Also, if you're looking to get back in shape, get that mobility, etc., check out the one month plan volume two. And if you want a little bit more of an intense workout, check out the original one month plan on onlykindsfitness.com. We've been getting some great feedback on those programs. Thank you all so much for watching this. We have more challenges coming out, so stay tuned. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you to all my patrons out there. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.